Hi everyone! I can say good evening, maybe it's good afternoon, or it may even be good morning, depending on where you're joining me uh, right now. Um, I'm coming to you guys live from my kitchen, not sure where you guys are, but hoping that wherever you are, you are safe and you are well. Thank you for joining me tonight, because it is tonight in Sydney, it's just gone six o'clock, um, which is a pretty exciting night here in Sydney, because Game of Thrones! <laughs> is now available the the um the first episode for anyone who's a game of thrones fan i don't even need, even know where i'm telling you this because you already know of course but um yeah it is a pretty exciting day here um in sydney or here in australia firstly game of thrones yes has finally come back to us after two years um hello from geelong oh hi bell thank you for joining thank you for joining um all the people who are joining us from wherever you are in the world it has been a stunning day in sydney today i have to say and it has been a huge huge week this time last week exactly one week ago i started to send out this <laughs> these were finally available they were delivered which means that i have now delivered them to the majority of you all lovely people will either have received your cookbook or your cookbook is on the way i sent out another thousand books today so we are getting close to catching up with all the pre-sales and i have to say the week's been a lot, well, last week's been a lot busier than what I thought because I have been overwhelmed with people requesting this book. So if you're one of the lovely people who have joined me on my journey and now have a copy of this uh, incredible gut healthy gut reset book, I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart because you have given me a very busy week but a very gratifying week it has been wonderful every single package that i have sent out this week has been sent out with love hi someone joining us from new plymouth hi megan um so just thank you all um for anyone who's bought this book there is still time to buy this book if you would like to purchase a copy i do still have some copies available before i go on to the next print run i will leave a link to this book in um, this video as soon as I finish doing this little video for you guys um, because I have got something pretty exciting to cook for you today and I thought if I've been away for a week and I've literally been offline pretty much for a week if I've been away for a week I want to come back and I want to come back hard and that is with a class with you guys tonight which is my happy healthy um, hot cross bun recipe so my hot cross buns by the way are gluten free of course they are they're also sugar free there is no dairy in my hot cross buns neither is there any egg so these hot cross buns are wonderful hi to craig and gizzy how are you going first place to get the sunlight in new zealand um so yes oh look at that nettie's just saying she got her book today thank you nettie i hope you're enjoying it as much as i am and you know one of the things i've really noticed about about this book is it is an absolute resource i use my book in my kitchen all the time i had a um i had a book launch here at home um on saturday a couple days ago we had about 120 people come around home and i cooked mainly from this book so even if you are on a gut health program or you're doing a gut reset or you just want to lose some weight or you're on a diabetes diet or whatever it is this book can be used for you Monday through to Sunday breakfast lunch and dinner and that's how I've categorized it in breakfast lunch and dinner recipes but you're throwing a party guess what <laughs> I use recipes directly out of this book to cook for all the people that came over home to help celebrate. So there is nothing stopping you from looking through these, these gorgeous, gorgeous high gloss. Look at these images. I'm so happy with them. And I filmed all these images just over there. I did. I, I didn't take the photos. <laughs> <laughs> but I did cook all the food with the help of a lovely lady Sharon who came and helped me as well but all these photographs were taken right here in my home you know that this is book has come right from my house this is right from me in my heart so thank you if you've ordered it because if you have ordered it before we get into the cooking class this is really cool if you have ordered a copy or if you've received a copy and um, you would like to enter a little competition I'm going to post a link to that competition tonight on Bridget's Kitchen and if you'd like to enter the competition if you have have a book in your hot little possession or you're about to have one all you need to do is photograph you with your book post it on Bridget's Kitchen or tag and Bridget's Kitchen on Facebook or Instagram and you go in the draw to win me coming into your home to cook a dinner party for you so I'm going to cook recipes from this book and you just need to sit there and chill out and relax and have your own personal chef for the night cook for you and your family. So if you have purchased my book, if you have a copy of my book, 
please take a photo. It has to be of you. Well, it doesn't have to be of you. It could be of someone else you love <laughs> as well. A photo of you holding the book. Tag in Bridget's Kitchen. And then you go into the draw to win a, not a copy of the book, a copy of me. Well, actually, it's not even a copy. It's me. You get to maybe have me come into your home and cook dinner for you and your family from this book. We'll have a bit of a dinner party. I might even throw in a few treats as well. A bit like the trick that I'm doing tonight. So tonight's cooking class for you guys and don't forget I will post a link to that rest um, to that competition later on tonight for you guys so you've got all the details of when it starts and how long you've got to take a photo of you in your book I'll also post a link to where you can purchase the cookbook remember this cookbook is only available online currently so you need to follow that link and just follow the prompt so I'll post those things for you guys but what we're gonna be doing tonight is actually another competition but also it's just something that you guys can really enjoy because it is Easter coming up right Easter's like in a couple of days which is really exciting so um, I thought I would do my first Easter cooking class with you guys which of course has to be hot cross buns and that is the theme for our April cook along here in Bridget's Kitchen so if you want to join the cook along which means you just have to cook this recipe which is the hot cross buns take a photo upload it to Bridget's Kitchen and then you go on the draw to win a signed copy of this book coming out towards you um, um, I will also repost the link to that competition look we've got so many things happening here in Bridget's Kitchen at the moment, but the most important thing is let's get into the recipe. Right, okay, hot cross buns. Of course, what Easter, what, what would it even be Easter without hot cross buns? I must say in my house it would not. And for many, many years I've, I've been quite busy and I haven't really, you know, thought ahead long enough to think, yeah, I'm going to make my own hot cross buns. Um, so this is this is the first year where I've gone, you know what, I'm going to make my own hot cross buns, but this time they're going to be healthy. So what I have done is I've taken away the gluten, I've taken away the sugar, I've taken away the dairy, and the, this recipe is also egg-free as well, which is quite fabulous. Now I do apologize if people are um, uh, asking me questions that I'm not answering. I'm, I'm running solo tonight, so it's just me and my camera. I've given the family the night off because they've been so busy helping me pack books that I've actually given them the night off. So if I if I don't answer your questions now, I'll try and get back to you after the um, after we stop broadcasting. So hot cross buns, here we go. It is simple, but there are a few watch points that we have to take into consideration. No, we're not using wheat flour. We are um, using other types of, of flour substitutes, but what you get is the most fabulous, flavorsome hot cross bun. That's really, really good for us. So that's why I'm excited to share it with you guys. So the first thing we need to think about is we need to ferment our yeast. So I'm gonna go over to the sink. And I want to get myself some tepid, if you can hear me, or warm water. So just, just turning on the tap, let it run just for a little bit, and you're wanting warm water. Not hot, and I'll tell you why in a second. You're definitely wanting it to be warm. So tepid water, I'm looking for about... I'm looking for about 300 mils of tepid water. Now tepid is like... If anyone's ever been to the tepid pools in Auckland, <laughs> have we got anyone watching from Auckland? I always remember the tepid baths, sorry. Tepid basically means warm, and it's something that is similar to blood temperature. So it's sitting, if you want to be precise, it's sitting between 36 degrees to around about a maximum of 40 degrees Celsius. Um, that is my tepid water. And we want it to be warm, because that's what's going to help to ferment our yeast. Now I'm using an instant dried yeast, and i tell you the best way that you can... Um, keep your yeast that's one of the other secrets is your yeast needs to be active so if your yeast has is died has died because this is a live a living um, product if your yeast is no longer active what that means is you're not going to get that rise out of your bread which is what you want of course so um one way to tell if your yeast is active is firstly to look on the um, packaging and check the use by date so if the use by date is even out by a small couple of days, I would definitely throw this away and buy yourself some more yeast. Um, there's another way you can actually, what you can do to keep make your yeast last a lot longer, is I keep my yeast in the freezer. So just with the lid on, on the side of the freezer, that lasts for about six months. So always make sure you've got active yeast. I suppose the rule of thumb is, thumb is if in doubt, throw it out, start again just in case you're curious, because if you don't have active yeast, you will get pancakes instead of hot cross buns, which is what we want. So into my tepid or warm water, we put our yeast, and it's that warm temperature, which is gonna help the yeast to activate 
and to start to ferment, which is what we wanted to do. I've just sprinkled over like two heaped teaspoons of yeast. And the other thing that yeast needs, it needs um, the right temperature, which is our lukewarm or blood temperature water. It needs to be active to begin with, so that it's not, it's, it's currently still a living organism. And the third thing that our yeast needs is a type of sweetener or sugar. Now, we don't have any sugar in this recipe, so what I'm actually using, I know it's backwards, guys, but that is fiber syrup from a company called Sirkin, spelled C-U-K-R-I-N. It is available online. And fiber syrup is a very low, low calorie um, alternative to maple syrup or honey or anything like that. So I'm using two teaspoons of the fiber syrup. Look, if you don't have fiber syrup and you don't mind adding a little bit of sugar, I would probably go for something like rice malt syrup. That would be my alternative. But ideally, you've got something like a fiber syrup in there because uh, when you want to talk about calories, I put two teaspoons in there, you're probably looking at about two to three calories in there now. So it's really, really good. And because it is a fiber syrup, it's also a little bit better for our gut health, which is really important. So that's our fiber syrup that goes in. Like I said, an alternative is rice malt syrup, which is readily available in the health food aisle of your supermarket. But if you're struggling to find this, the, 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 the Sirkin or the, the fiber syrup, because like I said, I, I buy that online. Um, if you're struggling to buy that, then use the rice malt and don't be too worried, you know? It is a little bit of a treat food. So you're only putting in two teaspoons. It's not gonna break the bank. So that goes in. The next thing we're gonna do, just give it a little bit of a, a little bit of a um, mix up. Don't be too, um, you know, too worried about making it all incorporated. You're kind of just doing like that. It's a bit of a mix. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my, my fermenting yeast. It's starting to bubble. It's starting to smell like beer as well. I'm going to get my, my fermented fermenting yeast. I'm going to put it into a nice warm spot in the kitchen. Now, uh, my mother used to put this in the hot water cupboard. She used to have, we had a big hot water cupboard in the kitchen with a big hot water cylinder and she would open it up and you would, she would have bottles of ginger beer in there. She would have, you know, bread uh, that was proofing. And anytime she had something that needed a warm spot, she would put um, her little things for raising in there as well. Like your kitchen might be fairly warm. You could just leave it on the bench. But if you're in a particularly cold place, you might want to think about the location of that. Because remember, the yeast needs that blood temperature, 37 degrees, 36 degrees, in order for it to start to bubble and ferment, which means it's starting to activate. So my little trick, you may be able to do this as well, but just be careful. You need to make sure that you can do this. Is I actually put that in the oven. So <laughs> before you go, what? I'm like, I have a setting on my oven that gets as low as 40 degrees. So 40 degrees is the perfect environment for yeast to multiply. So I can put mine in the oven. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna shoot over to the oven and put it on the right, the right setting, which is 40 degrees, no more than 40 degrees. Because remember, if the temperature is too hot, your yeast will die. If the temperature is too cold, your yeast will not activate and you won't get anything happening. So if you have a warming function on your oven, go and check it, don't do it now, but later on go and check it and see if you can get it down to 40 degrees. I think, and I'm not sure what that is in Fahrenheit, that is in Celsius. If anyone can tell us what that is in Fahrenheit, I would love, love that information right now, but it's pretty low. If you can get your oven down to 40 degrees, you can put your yeast mixture into the oven and allow it time to start to work. So while that's working, we can get onto the dry ingredients. And the dry ingredients are really, really simple. So firstly, I've got my bowl. I'm going to turn the camera down so you guys can see what I'm doing down here. There we go. All right, so into my bowl, I'm going to put my almond meal or my almond flour. It's gonna go in there first. I think I've got, got about 100 grams of that. Look, don't worry if you're, not, if you're not furiously taking down the notes of the recipe. I will give you a link to the recipe as well once the broadcast is finished. So the almond meal goes in there first. In this little bowl here, I actually have tapioca starch. Now, tapioca starch is made from the cassava root. So once again, of course, it's gluten-free. It, it feels very similar to corn flour and actually acts very similar to corn flour as well. If you can't find tapioca starch, you can um, substitute it for arrowroot. Arrowroot also works in that one as well. So that one goes in, in there. 
The next thing we've got is we have some coconut flour. So coconut flour, as you can imagine, is made from coconuts and it's wonderfully um, flavoured. That's why I don't have as much in this, whereas tapioca starch doesn't actually have any flavour. So that's why you can interchange tapioca and arrowroot quite happily. There's no flavour there. It's just the consistency that we're after. But our coconut flour does have some flavour, so I have not quite as much in there. And coconut flour is also very thirsty. So I, I, I haven't added too much because I don't want the, the buns to be dry. I want them to be lovely and sticky and delicious, which is going to be good. So those ingredients are in there, our dries. We're going to continue with the dry theme. And the next thing I'm going to add in there is I'm going to put in half a teaspoon of Himalayan salt. It's going to go in there. I'm also going to throw in our spices because, you know, what would hot cross buns, they just wouldn't even be hot cross buns if we didn't add spice. So the first spice I'm going to do, I know it's back to front, but it's mixed spice. And look, I've got hardly any left. You can see how much spicy cool baking I've been doing. And you know what? Just put in the whole thing. I think it's normally a teaspoon, but that looked about right. That, that, was, that was pretty good. You always can have, there's nothing wrong with having too much spice, right? They always have more spice. I'm going to put in the next one, which is back to front cinnamon. It's going there. I'm going to heap that one up too, because I love the spices in this. When these buns are cooking, the whole house smells absolutely phenomenal. So absolutely go for it. Don't be afraid. Right, next little dry that I'm doing. I should probably do it with a clean teaspoon because I just made a mess of that one. The next one I'm doing is um, called xanthan gum. Now xanthan gum, once again, it's got no flavour. You buy it in the health food aisle or in the health food shop, health food aisle of the supermarket. Now xanthan gum, about half a teaspoon of that goes in is what's going to help to bind these buns together because there's no gluten in the flour there in order to keep it combined so we need to add something and that's where the xanthan gum comes in handy so um, if you're looking through the ingredient list, list and you, you you see xanthan gum and you're like i don't know what that is i, I just won't bother this is one that you do need to bother with because that this is what's going to help to bind them together so they hold and they don't crumble which is really really important so um someone just told me that Oh, it's Sharon. Hello, my darling. 40 degrees Celsius is 104 degrees in Fahrenheit. And she used her Lenovo smart display to give her the answer. That's <laughs> brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So, um, xanthan gum, there you go. And 104 degrees if we are proofing on our, um, on our ferment fermenting yeast behind me in the oven just there. That was wonderful. All right, so xanthan goes in. So this is pretty much our dry ingredients done, except for the last thing. And anyone who's ever watched my cooking classes here on Facebook, you know what's in this jar. This is my jar of inulin powder. Just a small jar, right? Tiny, tiny little jar I have of inulin. Now inulin powder, we're going to add some inulin, firstly for its dietary fibre content. So we're adding dietary fibre to our hot cross buns which is always a good thing it's good for our gut health helps to keep us regular this is also a prebiotic so it helps to feed our probiotics which is really important but the wonderful thing about inulin is yes it's a dietary fiber it's very very low in calories extremely low in calories it is a prebiotic so it's really good for our gut health but it is a little bit sweet so what we have now added just to our hot cross buns mixture is just a touch of sweetness not too much don't need too much just a little touch of sweetness has, is going to give it such a nice little um you know a little taste of sweetness without it being too sweet because if you think about it even the almond meal has a sweetness to it it has flavor the coconut flour has flavor all those wonderful spices that we've got in there as well means that we're not just adding like and that's one of the things about the you know the hot cross buns you get from the supermarket they've got no flavor it's like eating just a big mouthful of i don't know <laughs> white bread with a little bit of spice you know, which is, it's, it's a little bit on the boring side. These are anything but boring. You are going to love the flavor of these because it's just complex. And that's because we're adding almond and coconut and we've got inulin in there. We've got these wonderful spices as well, which are definitely going to help too. So now I've just got that just stirred through. I'm going to go back and check up on our, our little friend in the oven there. I'm going to go see how he's doing. Normally that fermentation process with the yeast takes about five to ten minutes but because it's gone into a into a warm oven it usually speeds up the process. So let's have a little bit of a look. Bear with me. Okay right so 
So can you guys see what's kind of happening there? I'm not sure if you can. You see I've got the liquid down there and then on top it's starting to look like the top of a beer, of a freshly poured beer. Now that is what you are after. Oh, oh look at that Georgina is just saying that she got that cookbook on Friday. Woohoo! I'm glad you love it. Isn't it great? Such a good cookbook. Okay, so that's our that's our um that is our yeast. It could probably do with like a couple of um minutes more to give it that really big head like the head you'd for, for, normally find on a beer but because this is you know you guys it's okay <laughs> today normally i would leave it but i'm like you know what i'm gonna put it in and i'm gonna just go 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 for it and see what happens but normally i would allow that head to go on a little bit more so you're probably looking at about say if you leave it for 10 minutes is probably a really good idea but you want a nice big bit of frothy head on there as well so oh inulin wendy's asking where she can get the inulin don't be sorry when Wendy, it is, a, it is a bit of an odd one. So inulin, I'll spell it for you guys, and I'll, I'll probably throw this link up. Is anyone taking notes? Because <laughs> someone please send me um, a message about all the, all the links that I promised <laughs> to, to post up, because I'm probably going to forget them all. Um, inulin is spelt I-N-U-L-I-N, -I and you can purchase it in a health food store. I buy all mine online. I am based in Australia, and I buy my inulin online. It comes in one kilo bags, and I actually buy it on eBay. So I will post a link to that but depending on where you live I would definitely google inulin powder my inulin powder is comes from chicory root so chicory root is also the wonderful root that gives us dandelion tea if you guys all know dandelion tea they're all in the same family so chicory root is where I get my inulin I buy mine on eBay but you please by all means google inulin powder I do I do I must admit that it's the cheapest way I have found to purchase it is via e, um, via online stores or eBay. You may have a, a health food store. If, if you do have somewhere where you know you can purchase it cheap, please let us know here on the page. I'm, I know everyone would love to have more information about inulin because it is a fabulous, fabulous um, little ingredient to include in your diet most definitely. So we're gonna we're gonna look at incorporating the wet ingredients now into our dry ingredients. I love recipes like that. You know, everything kind of separates itself and then it all comes together in this kind of awesome chaotic wonderful mess which is what we're going to do now so making a little bit of a well which I always remember doing as a kid and make a well in the flour <laughs> we still do it just helps to keep keep it from uh, mixing uh, keep it mixing really well together so we're going to add in that fermented liquid mixture and the other thing we're going to add at this point would you believe is another dietary fiber slash uh, probiotic wonder gem that I, I use all the time in my kitchen and that is psyllium husks I know that's backwards as well <laughs> psyllium husks now psyllium husks they are literally a dietary fiber for anyone who's on a gut health program and you're having um, a morning drink if you just want to check the ingredients on your morning drink in a packet chances are you'll find that that drink has psyllium husks in it they look like that and that drink's probably also got inulin in it so it's stuff that's readily available um, but also currently maybe even available in some of the supplements you're taking. So just have a little bit of a look at that. Uh, psyllium husk is a dietary fiber. It will also thicken products really, really well. So once again, because we've taken out the gluten content, because we're not having flour in this, we need to make sure to put in something that's going to bind our ingredients together. And that's what psyllium husk do. So I've just got them in the liquid. Give it a bit of a stir just to combine. And my, that's why well is really important, right? I'm just stirring it all in there. Wonderful. Psyllium husks are also available. I've seen them in the supermarket now. So you can buy, like, literally buy that at Woolies or Coles in Sydney, in Australia, or in a countdown in New Zealand in the health food aisle, which is really handy. If not, online. Google it. That's my favorite line. Google it. If you don't know the answer, Google it. Unless it's a medical diagnosis, then don't Google it. <laughs> Go see your doctor. My cousin who's a nurse is watching this, so I know she's she's a, she's nodding furiously when I said that. <laughs> not naming any names, eh, Lisa? Uh, no, 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 not naming any names. Oh, sorry, I forgot to say what I was doing. Right, in here, 
I got ahead of myself. In here, I have my uh, currants that have been soaking for about 20 minutes. So you soak your currants for about 20 minutes, and just, just in cold water. And the reason why we soak them is because we want them to take on the fluid. So they will stay lovely and voluptuous and juicy when they're baking and they won't dry out. You could add them straight and dry, and you're gonna get a dry, manky um, currant, which is, <laughs> Lisa stop laughing. It's not ideal. You don't want man manky currants. You want to have nice lovely Voluptuous currants. So that's why we soak them You could even be triple naughty and soak them in some type of alcohol, but I'm not condoning that just saying not condoning the <laughs> Not condoning the alcohol soak, but you could Do you see where we're going with this? You could but I'm not condoning it that's what normally happens though. Right, okay, so that's soaked for about 20 minutes. Um, you could soak them for longer if you wanted to, but 20 minutes is about fine. But we need to drain that liquid now because our currants are lovely and voluptuous. If you don't like currants, I don't know anyone who doesn't like currants who likes dried fruit. Maybe you're a Sultana fan or maybe you're a raisin fan. Absolutely, you can totally do that. You could be a cranberry fan. You could add any dried fruit in, into this recipe. I personally like currants. There's something about the flavor. I mean, I like raisins, but I find them a little bit too big for the hot cross bun, so I'm a currant fan. But you don't have to add currants. You could literally add whatever you want in there. I've just got a bit of stick. I don't want to have a bit of currant stick. That's not very nice. You could add any dried fruit you want into this, or if you're not a fan of fruit, some people like fruitless uh, cross buns, just leave it out. Quite simply, don't have to add anything else, don't have to double any other th anything, just leave it out completely. But it's up to you, you could add apricots instead of currants, you know, you could add, um, you know, chop up some, some figs, some dried figs, prunes, whatever you want to go in there. But I quite like the currants, I think they're a good size as well. So that goes in well drained you don't want the liquid in there you just want the juicy voluptuous current which is important and then we're just going to work it together and give it a bit of a mix and i'm doing this with a spoon even in the recipe i say do it with your hands you will get you will get hands on but right now it, the spoon's actually a little bit better just because it's going to get pretty messy as you can see it's quite a sticky dough at this stage and what we want to do is create a dough that's like a soft ball so I can actually hold it in my hand so I'm at that stage now where it's a sticky dough which is not ideal I'm just gonna get rid of that stuff on there so what I need to do is add just a little bit more dry ingredients to bring it to that consistency where I can actually pick that dough up without it completely sticking to my hands. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to add some more tapioca starch to it. Now I haven't given any quantities in the recipe about how much tapioca starch you're going to need to add to get it to the um, consistency we want. And the reason being is because what I find is that depending on what type of almond flour you use, depending on what type of coconut flour you use, all these type of flours have slightly different absorbency rates. So it will not be exact for any of us doing this recipe. Like I might add another half a cup of tapioca flour to get it to that, that ability that I can pick it up. You might only add a quarter. So just go slowly with it. This is when we start to use our hands because it's more of a feel. And it's like our grandmothers and our aunties and our mums. You know, they were able to create things without using recipes because they knew exactly how it was supposed to feel. And this is what we're doing here. We're learning the feeling. Like, for me, that's still a little bit sticky. You see that? I've got a fly on my phone. Where did that? That's <laughs> you didn't see it, but it was on, it was on my side. It's like, you cheeky... Take your little bugger, get out of here. All right, so we're feeling our way through the dough. This is the fun part. This is the part where you should get the kids involved. You've got kids or grandkids around. This is the part they're gonna absolutely love because they're able to get dirty and they're able to eat the, um, the, the, what they end up making, which is probably the best part for kids. But you know, you can already see that that dough is now being able to pick up. So that is perfect. It's still soft. Look at that, it's still really soft, but when I move it from hand to hand, it's not sticking to me, which is really important. So this is, what exactly is tapioca flour? Tapioca flour is made from the cassava plant. Um, so it is a, a tuber or a root uh, starch. Grows underground 
is eaten in um, countries like South America, eat a lot of um, cassava. So do um, the different Polynesian islands, Pacific islands as well. But that's what we're looking for. And this, like I said, this is the fun part. This is when you get to play around with it a little bit. You should still be able to, you can see how I can kind of put my fingers in, but when I bring it out, it's not really sticking to me. That's the consistency that you're after. So that is the hardest part of this entire recipe. Uh, arrowroot and cassava are slightly different um, plants, but they're still very similar family. So um, arrowroot can be changed out for tapioca. Um, if you can't find tapioca, there's nothing stopping you from going to the baking section of the supermarket and picking up a bag of arrowroot as well. So now I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. I now need to leave this to double in size or to proof. So once again, we're going to go back to our oven. We're going to go back to our oven, which is sitting on, remember, 40 degrees, which is 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Thank you very much, Sharon. I'm going to put a just a clean tea towel over top of the bowl, and that now is going to go back into the oven, and that's going to proof in the oven for around about 20 to 30 minutes. All I want it to do is to double in size. Once it's doubled in size, it's ready to go. That's that's my that's my um, my guide is, and it will determine on where you put it and how hot that environment is, or warm that environment is. Will determine how long it will take for you to get double in size. Could take you 20 minutes. Could take you half an hour. Could take you an hour, maybe even an hour and a half. You just Keep an eye on it. When it's doubled in size, it's ready to go. So I'm going to go up to the oven, pop it in. But here's one I prepared earlier. Da, 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 da. Just take off this. Uh, you probably can't see that, but can you see that? Yeah, cool tea towel. Okay, right. Yeah, enough. My New Zealand tea towel. All right, so. <laughs> Here's a, a, a dough that I put in uh, just before I started the broadcast, and even just with just just by even taking it out of the bowl, you can see it's pfft, shrunk down, which is got which is normal, which is going to happen. But this has doubled in size, and now it's shrunk back down again. All I need to do now is a little bit of tapioca starch goes onto the onto the, the a clean bench, and we're going to start to shape our buns. And like I said, this is the fun bit. Give it a little bit of a knead on the bench. Not too much. Get rid of those boards. Don't need them there anymore. We're just going to give them a bit of a knead. And I'm using the, the palm, or the, the, it's not the palm, it is. It's the palm. Yeah, it's palm. <laughs> Think about that. Using my palm and just bringing it forward gently, though. You don't need much room because there's no gluten in here. So we're not needing to, to work the gluten. All we need to do is to make sure it's lovely and combined. So from this one recipe, depending on the size you'd like to make your hot your hot cross buns, you can get sort of, um, I, I normally get eight, but you could get um, 10 or you can get six. Depends on what you like, but I normally get eight. So what I do is I size up the ball to begin with. And then I take, you can take a, you can take a knife. I've got one of these these pastry cutters and then you can portion it always go in half this is how you get your even shapes go in half first yeah and we're just gonna work with one half at a time so from this one half I said I can get eight hot cross buns so I'm gonna get I'm gonna try and get four pieces out of this one so now that we're in half let's go in half again and let's go in half one more time so now we've got our four pieces there and then what we're going to do is we're just going to begin once just making sure our bench is just drizzled with a little bit of um, a dry just so it doesn't stick we're just going to work work the little balls with that once again I'm using my hand but I'm doing it very very gently and rolling it into a ball there's one bun looking pretty good get that one going as well you don't want too much flour when you do this One's a bit small. I'm just going to add a bit more to it. You don't want to add too much of the tapioca because you actually want to have a little bit of friction on the bench as you're doing it. A little bit of a little bit of resistance helps to um, form the ball. And I'm doing it with really soft hands. I'm not being firm with this at all. I'm almost barely even touching it. I'm allowing the ball to kind of rotate in my hand. That one's a bit smaller than that guy, but that's all right. There's two. Do it one more time. This one's huge. I'm going, to, I'm going to take a piece of that and put it over there. But they don't have to be all the same size. That's the beauty, right? That is the beauty. So there we go. Whoop. Bit dry. You can just add a little bit more flour that's already on the board. 
There we go, making it into a ball. And last one will bring us up to our four. If you want them bigger, of course, you just make them a little bit bigger. It's up to you. Right, I'm going to do this last one here. So we start with the whole of the half. We're getting, um, we want to get four pieces out of it, so we always go in half. This is the easiest way to, to get portion control when it comes to making these sort of things. And then we go in half again, and we go in half again. This is like one of my favorite bits of equipment in the kitchen, I tell you. After my knife, I love it. So uh, we're going to roll them. Once again, just be really gentle. Look, I haven't added any more flour. All I'm using is a flour that's already existing there on my board. You don't have to add any more because you don't want two more because it just gets too, it gets too dry and then you don't have that resistance, which is what you want when you're actually making the balls come up. That's little. I'm going to add a little bit more there. You can do these things. You can have little ones. You can have big ones. It's up to, completely up to you. But you can see that with that small amount of flour that I sprinkled on, that's all I needed in order to get me to that stage, which is eight little hot cross buns. Reminds me of a song, little sticky buns sitting in a window. Wasn't that a song from back when we were kids? I'm pretty sure it was. But I could be wrong, could be making it up. Now the last thing I'm going to do is because I love inulin. It's a handful of inulin. <laughs> Let's just roll it in the inulin a little bit. Why not, right? A little bit of inulin there. There's a little bit of sweetness. There's a little bit of texture. A little bit more dietary fiber that we're adding to it as well. Now you could at this point... You could literally um, s let these little balls sit on the bench here, covered in a tea towel, and they would just l puff up a little bit as well. But you don't have to, because we are using instant yeast, so it's absolutely not necessary to do that. So what we're going to do now is we need to make the crosses. So the crosses, I'm just going to use with a little knife. So just cutting through, but you're not going right through. You're almost making like a dent on top here. Yeah? You're maybe only going down a couple of millimeters. And when they cook, what will happen is those crosses will come just a little bit more prominent and they'll open up just a little bit for you. So you want to go down like that. And the last thing we're going to do after we've done our crosses, oh, get rid of that, that's in the way. The last thing we're going to do is we need to add the glaze. So normally, um, glaze on these type of buns might be, um, oh gosh, you got look at flour everywhere. Never mind, never mind. I'm not going anywhere after this. I'll be fine. <laughs> Just staying home, so I'll be all right. Um, normally, a glaze might be anything from an egg yolk or milk or cream or something like that. Whereas we are going dairy free and egg free. So the glaze that I've got in here is is now on the bench is coconut milk which we're going to use directly on from the clean bench so there you go oh cat's coming over to investigate she's investigating the spillage that is currently leaking down the down the side of the table good on you cat nope not a fan of coconut milk that's all right thank that's why we always work with a clean bench too because then we have the ability to do that which is quite wonderful so yes coconut milk which is now yeah yeah on the bench like I said, who cares, right? As long as your bench is clean. All right, so once we're at this stage, we'll move that to the side. So this is the other thing this does really well. Look, it acts like a bulldozer. Any mess you got on your bench is now, check that out. How cool is that? You just bulldoze all the stuff you don't want. It's actually really good when you are baking because you get to scrape up anything that's stuck on the bench really really well and I've just managed to bulldoze my entire mess I'm just gonna put it down there where you guys can't see oh shucks you can still see that I'm looking at the camera going no they can still see <laughs> no no crisis not averted here we go here we go we'll clean that up later on. okay so um you have a couple of options on how you bake this. This is, the, this is another super exciting part. And I've given you both options in the recipe that I'm going to post as soon as this broadcast is finished. I've given you both, um, both options. And you can either do this in the oven, which um, for um, anyone who also has a pizza stone, you can heat up the pizza stone and then put them straight into a really, really hot pizza stone, which is nice. If you do not have a pizza stone, you can still do it on a baking sheet. That's fine as well. The other option for you is this machine that I've got here, 
I was not sure if you can see. Can you see that? That is my air fryer. Just gonna put the, there we go. You can also put it into an air fryer. So um, I normally do my hot cross buns or any type of small baking in the air fryer. And with the air fryer, it sits on 190 degrees on bake. I've got this really big one. I just got it a couple, a couple uh, days ago. It's a 10 liter air fryer. I can do a whole rotisserie chicken on this. I haven't done it yet. But when I do, don't you worry, I'll be talking about it to see if it's amazing. So um, you can do that, which is fantastic, in the air fryer at 190 degrees. And they take around about 18 to 20 minutes to bake. Or you can bake them in the oven. Um, the oven's sitting at around about 180 from memory. I could be wrong. Check your recipe just in case I'm wrong. They can go in the oven. But if you have a pizza stone, you're going to get a lovely crunchy base on that as well, which is wonderful. So they can go into the air fryer. Of course, I prepared one for you that I made earlier. He's a little bit flat. But um, the only reason he's flat is because I didn't proof the yeast enough. Ha <laughs> ha, but look at him. He's gorgeous. But what I really want to show you is just... The consistency, look at the crumb on that. It is so, so incredibly chewy. Sorry for the dirty, flowery fingers. It is so incredibly chewy. Perfect, perfect little hot cross buns for Easter. Now remember, let's go back up the top. Now please, no flour up here yet. No, please remember that if you are, um, wanting to make this recipe i'll share the link with you guys straight after this video where you can download the recipe um, this recipe is not currently available in my book which is just being delivered it's not available in this book because this recipe i only invented a couple weeks ago and this rest this book is a gut health or gut reset book so this book is, is gluten-free, sugar-free, dairy-free, and very, very low in fat. So you're not going to find this recipe in that book. But you can get that, um, that recipe online from me once we, we uh, finish this broadcast. I'll share that recipe with you guys so you can download it. If you make that recipe, remember to post a photo of your recipe on, on Bridget's Kitchen. And you'll go in the draw to win a signed copy of my cookbook. Um, I'm also giving away some free membership to my website, bridgetshealthykitchen.com as well. If you enter that recipe, it's our April cook-along. It's our Easter cook-along, which is wonderful. But our big competition as well is if you have a copy of my book or you're about to receive a copy of my book or you're about to purchase a copy of my book, take a photo of you with my book, tag Bridget's Kitchen in, and you go in the draw to win me coming into your kitchen. And this is a worldwide competition. This is opened up to anyone around the world who has a copy of Bridget's Kitchen and I can tell you I sent out this book all over the world all over the world I did lots of internationals today so I know it's going all over the world take a photo of your you and your book you go in the drawer to win me coming into your kitchen and cooking dinner for you and your family so really exciting I will post a link to that competition very soon I will also repost our April cook along which are hot cross buns I will give you a link to the cookbook and I will give you a link to the hot cross bun recipe so I better go and do that. Thank you for joining me tonight. I hope you've enjoyed this cooking class. And I have so many exciting things to share with you coming up as well. So many recipes leading up to Easter. They're all my Easter treats. So stay watching Bridget's Kitchen. Keep an eye. Tomorrow morning, I've got a very exciting recipe to share with you guys, which is ideal for Easter. All right, guys, take care. And we'll talk to you really, really soon. Bye.